and welcome to Variant Edition's new releases show. My name is Danica. And my name is Brandon. Happy Tuesday, everybody. I hope your weekend was great. Indeed. Ours really, really was. We had a first um, Monday off proper in a very long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> true. true. Very true. Pew, pew, pew. Lasers. <laughs> Lasers and anxiety. Yes, my friends. So, uh, last. Wait, when did I? Do okay, this? I'll fix this up. Oh. Oh no. Can you? Yeah, we're good. Keep going. Oh, okay, I cool. I wasn't sure. Okay, cool. All right. Um, yes. So yeah. I have painted the walls two colors, and I would like your assistance with this. Um, honestly, you know. I guess leave a vote in the comments and we'll figure out which one looks better. Yeah, I'm going to pop this up too. I'm going to pop up your camera just so you're aware. Oh, okay. Um, for a different angle and a different bit of lighting. <gasps> That's true. So yeah, I've got the afternoon tea and I think roasted chestnut. And these are one shade different, which is kind of fun um, because they look so different when they're on. Yeah. And like this one's getting... This one's getting most of this light. That's so you can true. see it a lot brighter there. That's why I wanted to show this over here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that you can kind of get a lot of its natural color, how it would look all across. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Okay. Got one vote for the chestnut. I love it. This is good. So, yeah, yeah we'll Seeing kinda... it all filled in. Yeah, and actually, um, this is two coats. Um, I would do a third uh, on the chestnut, but mm -hmm. the afternoon tea only needs two coats, which is great. Yeah. There's just some imperfections that I, I notice in the wall, um, but I wanted to make sure uh, I wasn't going to be priming and painting over it again, just in case. Um, but yeah, leave your leave your vote uh, in the comments and over the next week and probably next Monday if I have enough spoons because <laughs> this Saturday is free comic book day and I might be tired for about 48 hours afterwards. Um, I'm going to paint the walls to match so they'll match each other mm -hmm. and then probably prime some other walls in the office that are accessible to me without moving a giant bookshelf. Yay. Yeah, we're going to do the office in pieces. <laughs> and Andrew, this is exactly what's happening with us too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like they're both pretty good. They're both good. Mm -hmm. I know. I like them both, which is difficult. And honestly, it's just so nice to have some color in here. Um, I was walking by kind of just doing some errands yesterday and the lights were off, um, but the sun was out. And so the walls reflected the glow and it just, it seemed like the sun was in the room and it was so nice. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm so happy about that. Excuse me. Yeah, no, it's different. It's different, isn't it? Hmm. I don't know. I like it. The best thing is our I am busy uh, print goes with either color <laughs> because it's gold. <laughs> <laughs> so we could hang it on the wall if we really want to, but I kind of like where it's leaning. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that's kind of what's going on here. Um, hey, it's our eighth anniversary today. Yep, we're eight. Uh, did we remember this in advance? No. As you can see by the title of this week's uh, new releases show, um, we've got uh, new comics and Chip Zdarsky because at the end of the show, you're going to see the first half of our interview with Chip Zdarsky uh, that happened a few months or... Um, a month and a half ago um, in preparation for his upcoming uh, trip to Edmonton. Um, so we're splitting out into two parts, one this week and one in the weeks to come. And uh, we will get that happening uh, at the end of the show. It's a good conversation. I liked it. Um, and yeah, uh, if I would have thought, I would have been like, yeah, we're going to start. <laughs> we're going to start putting this out on our eighth anniversary. That would make sense. I mean, you do have it ready, so... It is true. Hey, we're starting to put this out because it's our 8th anniversary. We can do whatever we want. We're the owners, Brandon. Hey, scratch that. Um, hey, uh, who's our editor? I think it might be Squee. I think Squee's the video editor. I thought Squee was sound. Mm. 
Oh no, was Jim sound because Jim she's sound. mostly deaf? Yeah, Jim sound because she's mostly deaf. Oh my god. Thanks, so we always sound video. great. Um, Squee. He's our color correction. If he matches yeah. the wall, it, no. I'm Fix this in post. Cut the part of the live the stream live that feed. we're doing. Yeah. Uh, cut the part uh, where we said we didn't realize that it's our 8th anniversary. Of course we did. Um, you know, you can always lie to people. And we made these plans. They won't know that you're lying. And it worked out. And look at us. Look at us now. A business lie is an okay lie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, that will only end poorly for everybody. <laughs> anyway, we're eight. Um, so back in the oh, what did um, what did they say on the Challengers podcast this week? Uh, BC before COVID. B yeah, I loved that. Back in the uh, 2019 BC, <laughs> 2015 BC rather. Why is 2019? I don't know. I think it's just because it's right before. Anyway, 2015 BC. Uh, we were this little wee shop and we opened with like probably less than a quarter of the books that we have now. Oh, yeah. And uh, nothing but uh, a shoestring and a dream. Yep. Yep. We had uh, weird uh, little shelves from a, a kid's toy store Aww. that held our all ages stuff. Yeah, because our all ages stuff could fit on two shelves. <laughs> yeah, two bookcases basically. It's the third of the store now. <laughs> yeah, very proud of that and that build. Um, yeah. This is hilarious, by the way. <laughs> Who comes to comics to make money, silly goats? You do it for the love of the game. Yeah, you, you little, you little scoundrels. Uh, especially since, like, doing the comic book writing is a long-term job as well. Yep. Uh, I'll just, you know, moonlight as a comic book artist. I'm like, okay, so like, <laughs> good job. Good luck with that. I know it, I know they say this one has the potential to go longer than the last one, yep. by all accounts. Um, but, man, if we get uh, some Hollywood people coming in for three issues and being like, oh, sorry, I got my job back. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't want to, I don't want to be that industry. 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 Anyway, yeah. So we had a rock and good weekend, and then we realized it was our eighth birthday today, which is super cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like it's it's kind of kind of just wild. Like I guess we have to start planning our tenth, huh? Because like the tenth is a big one. Yeah, I already know how our logo is gonna look. How? Are you putting like a 10 in some of the letters? Yeah, you are. I Edition. know you. T-I-O-N. I know you. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Variant to dish 10. <laughs> Welcome to variant to dish 10. <laughs> I'm going to say that nonstop that year. Oh, no. You're going to get It's our variant to dish 10-year anniversary. No. Don't be like one of those 50-somethings that's like, it's my birthday month. Like, just don't. Don't do it. I am the birthday maven. <laughs> oh no, no, no. We still yeah. got copies on shelf, my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Andrew Foley's favorite book to tell people about. Yeah. And for good reason. Ooh, we got a banner. Just got a little thing on the bottom just to tell people to stay tuned. There's banner, Brandon. Banner. There's always room in the banner. Banner stand. Banana stand. <laughs> that was really lame. That was really lame. Anyway, um, our May is going to be super bonkers. Very excited about all of it. Um, but yeah, obviously the big news is free comic book day this Saturday. This May Saturday. 6th, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. We will have free comics. We will have people running around that are wearing lanyards and that vaguely know what they're talking about. And also, we will be there, hopefully also knowing what we were talking about. <laughs> no promises. Eight years. No promises. <laughs> Very tradition. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I'm pretty sure we're in the breezeway again with the free comic. So I'm hoping to... 
hoping it's not too windy like last year but uh generally if it is wind is the only thing we have to worry about yeah if it rains we're fine we're covered but wind eh. so we'll see this is where we need your dad back on this coast so he can find us all kinds of little rocks that's true that's true could go around and steal rocks from people's gardens but i don't think that would be good to do for our neighbors we could hire a precocious uh, uh, pre- uh precocious eight-year-old to find us rocks i don't know if we know any eight-year-olds it's a joke because we know like a lot of we know a lot of eight-year-olds we know a lot <laughs> there we go yeah sean knows <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the wind Wow, I miss Andrew saying, may God have mercy on our souls. What <laughs> is happening? Anyway. Also, folks, mm. the news doesn't stop here at Variant Edition. Andrew's got a Kickstarter going right now. That's true. Um, so if you're, <laughs> if you're looking for a good read in the near future, mm-hmm. uh, what you want to do is go over to www no sorry http colon slash slash www.kickstarter.com oh, search for threads um it is a wonderful you know what you know what you know what give me a couple seconds vamp for me bring us your rocks bring us your tiny gems nothing too wild no like like a like a like a handheld rock don't bring us a rock yeah, things that could easily be picked up. Yeah, things that we could put on. Little paper comics, just in case there's wind. We little comics. We little. Um, this is exciting. Uh, it feels like the last free comic day was like a long time ago, and it wasn't. But the last year and a bit has been a lot, to say the least. Um, but yeah, I think we're we've hit a good stride, and we're we're kicking kicking ass and taking names and going booking book fairs and taking and ass and kicking names. That's what you do on your Fridays off is not my my responsibility or I don't know. <laughs> I want none of this, sir. <laughs> that is your own private time. <laughs> All right, I want to share. Oh, no, 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 no. Andrew, I'm not putting that up. That's too dark, even for you. So, I don't have the address up, but this is what you want to see once you get there. Uh, What's What's it about? That's what I'm going for. Okay. Threads, are you wearing it or is it wearing you? Threads is a B-movie, sci-fi, uh... Sartorial satire. I don't know how to say sartorial. Sartorial satire, which... Ten points, thank you. Uh, of high fashion, sibling rivalry, and mind-controlling alien fabric. Huh? Amazing. Let's see if I can do this. Bronco in Comics is proud to present our latest graphic novel, Threads, a 96-page B-movie sci-fi sartorial satire of high fashion, sibling rivalry, and mind-controlling alien fabric. Threads is the story of the Strand sisters, Devon and Phoebe, as they try to break into the fashion industry. They both face issues with Devon's sudden success until Phoebe discovers an alien fabric that changes their fortunes, challenges their relationship, and tries to take over the world. Spoofing the fashion industry and B-movies at the same time, Threads is full of B-movie sci-fi action and suspense, great humor, and strong female characters. We've finally finished the book. Oh yeah, I'm good with there. <laughs> <laughs> we finally finished the book. It's me. You should read it. Not me. No. Um, I love that. So I have read all of this. I'm a fan of all of this. Um, oh, it's one of those songs where they're talking in the background. It freaks me out every time. <laughs> Who's I'm in just our like, house? What is Who's happening? House? I locked the door. Uh, it is funny. It is very fully funny. Um, I like the weird little dark bits uh, that are in there. Um, and I'm trying to remember some stuff specifically that I was just like, oh my God, that is. Um, and it's bugging me. Um, yeah, no, that's not going to play well. Um, yeah. 
write things down in I your do need to write things book. down when I'm reading things. Oh my god. Oh. I'll tell I'll tell you tomorrow, Foley. Um, because I just need to page through and find it. Well, uh, he knows it's good. You need to tell everybody else it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, Andrew won't tell anybody that he thinks this is good. And that's because he's got the same brain I do, oh. but it is good. This is a good idea. Do you still have that QR code maker that you used the one time? <laughs> oh. We could do that. Yeah, we could get some printouts happening. Yeah, we will do that. Good idea. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, search up that. Uh, do that up. We are going to have copies in store, of course. Hell of course. yeah. If you ask Foley really nicely, he might sign it. If you ask Foley really nicely, he might sign any comic. Yeah, probably. He'll probably sign uh, the Wesley Snipes one as Wesley Snipes. So, like, you just do what you want with that. Andrew, would you sign a run of The Exiled if we get it? Like, if we get all of them all the way through, will you sign oh, no. each issue of The Exiled so we can sell it? As Wesley Snipes. No, not as Wesley Snipes. <laughs> as a set on our website marketed as The Exiled as signed by Andrew Foley. <gasps> I love that. I love it. We should do that. It's only a mini, right? Like, it's like, what, yeah. four? This is great. Heck yeah. So, um, we're going to get to stack right away here. Yeah, we probably We've been messing around for a little bit. <laughs> 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 yes. That's fair, yeah. Outstanding. I love all of this. Well, now we're committed to getting the whole set in the store. Oh, yeah. No, I am I would absolutely do it for charity. Mm -hmm. Like, most of our shenanigans end up toward going towards a, a charity of some kind. So we're just like, how do we funnel these shenanigans so that we still get to do them as adults who own a business, <laughs> but don't look like total bozos? Yeah. Love a good shenanigan. Our... Oh, it's six issues, baby. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be so much fun. It's I'm good. so excited about this now. Okay. Um, <laughs> for those of you who are unaware, um, watching, The Exiled is a, is a truly uh, unique piece of art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. As put together by one Wesley Snipes in so far as he said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I was in this comic book probably? y'all go and make it and they sure made a thing um one of the things that i keep coming back to because it's the easiest thing to kind of come back to is uh, uh as a hallmark of how bonkers the story and composition of everything is um they find a guy who's on the ground whose spine has been ripped out of his back and they're like ah clearly this is a suicide <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh no! Yeah, the old-fashioned spine popping suicide. You just no, no, nope. it's not gonna work. I'm trying. <laughs> no, there's no way in there. There's no access points. Oh no. <laughs> I am very good at my job, Andrew. He is. It's embarrassing for the rest of us. <laughs> we just, we are just. You in your guys show. are really good at. I learned from you, doofus. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason I'm good. <laughs> oh no, no. Okay, no, no. Mm -mm. Only <laughs> Facebook gets that. Tell me about comics, please. Uh, we have this wonderful special edition. Uh, issue of We Are Legends that DC has put out. Uh, they made it available for us for pretty freaking cheap. So you're going to see a lot of this on Free Comic Book Day. But if you are in the store, we can get you a copy sooner. Um, this is uh, the three short stories that were put in the Lazarus Planet um, one shots that feature uh, the We Are Legends characters, which is a, a 
as it says down here, We Are Legends is the first AAPI community-led initiative of its kind within any major comics publisher. And we are thrilled to share these exciting new adventures with you. So uh, three, six new miniseries, uh, Spirit World, The Vigil, and City Boy. Um, you have uh, Spirit World, which is sort of like a, a uh, kind of a more manga-style adventure story from Alyssa Wong and uh, Haining, um, which is uh, brilliant. It has lots of color. You have The Vigil, which is from Ram V, and uh, Lilith Kumar uh, Sharma, uh, which is more of sort of like a mysterious superhero style uh, story. And you have City Boy from Greg Pak and Minkyu uh, Young. Um, and that one's more about um, someone whose powers are essentially derived from uh, how cities function basically um and he racks in different ways from different maps of cities basically um what i liked about how dc did all of this is they introduced all of these concepts in some bigger books and in terms of the vigil ram v uh weaved them into detective comics before popping out here so you get you get this sort of like lived in feature and uh instead of having to buy all these three different one uh one shots to get these little stories you get them all here you can taste them mm, nom 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 and you can find out which flavors are best for you. And I highly recommend doing that. DC is also uh, has promoted the line with first issue returnability. Woo! So we are going a little uh, deeper on those than we normally would for uh, B characters uh, because this is a strong initiative from strong creators. And I do think that folks are really going to want to try it out. Did I put both of these over here? I did. Oh. We're going to have to talk about that one later. Oh, yeah, it'll be in the pile. I had it in one of the number ones. Or somewhere. Stacky. Big ol' stacky. All right. Angle. So, Next we are up. so excited for this one. You can get the regular cover or the movie cover. You can get the shiny ball cover. The shiny ball cover is a little more money. Or you can get the uh, Baron's cover. Bjorn Barons, I believe. Oh, wait, this way. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it was yeah, like yeah. opposite hands. Uh, and this is Mr. Good, good, right, right boy, because he's not doing the draw, draw on this one. Nope. Kyle Starks with Steve Pugh doing the orts. Very good, very good. Solid team. Um, Kyle Starks has this sort of like weird, funny 80s action uh, kind of story living in his veins. And Steve Pugh uh, was the one who did uh, the art for uh, Mark Russell's Flintstones and Billionaire mm, Island. Okay. So he got that in there. Did he do the Jimmy Olsen run? No, or, oh, not who? Steve Lieber. Lieber, right. Sorry, wrong Steve. So we have, Jeez. having earned his release from the Suicide Squad, Peacemaker wants to try and do normal superhero stuff for a change. But unfortunately, everybody, including the bad guys, thinks he sucks. Uh, <laughs> but when busting up a terrorist ring introduces Christopher Smith to the cutest thing to ever walk on four legs, he finds the unconditional love he's been denied his whole life. That is, until the dog is kidnapped right from under him by a supervillain who has some very unsuperhero plans for Peacemaker's brand of ultraviolence. Will he be able, uh, will he help an infinitely unstable superpower criminal steal the world's most valuable and dangerous DNA? Honestly, Christopher's pretty lonely, so it just depends on how nicely they ask. So yeah, very excited for this. Um, it says, Kyle Starks and Steve Pugh deliver a brutal and hilarious take on DC's biggest POS that will bust guts, break bones, and melt hearts. The dog is very cute. The dog is very cute and has the best name, but you'll have to read it to find out. If you buy this comic only for the dog, we will not judge you. Also, please rest assured, Kyle Starks is not going to kill a dog. No, the dog will not be harmed. The dog will continue to be cute. If Kyle Starks does anything, he will have the dog turn on him because he is a, actually a smart dog, and this was a plot. <gasps> dog plot. Me, <laughs> puppy. Exactly. And a very fancy little puppy at that. All right, next up. If you could hold up, oh my. Okay, I'll take one. There's three covers of Lamentation. Oh, there's five covers of Lamentation. Lamentation. But three regular covers. Whoop, nope, we're going down. One, one for 10, which we have at the store, and a secret edition. There's a secret. There's a secret edition. What? What? 
Uh, not every store got the secret edition. I can tell you that much. Oh my. Okay. But we did. We did. Because we're good at secrets. We're not good at secrets. From the mind's eye of master master storyteller Colin Button and rising star Arjuna Suzimi comes a darkly glamorous tale of bone splintering terror. Ah, uh, <laughs> the t the kind of terror that splinters bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it well. Oh yes. After weeks of grueling rehearsals, a new production is set to begin at the famed Requiem Theater. Razi, Razid's Lament. Three acts of gothic horror set inside a, a haunted castle with a story that some say is more than mere fantasy. Under the stern rule of a de dedicated but temperamental director, the script seems to be ever-changing. And more mysteriously still, our lead actress has found herself cast in the role of a lifetime without so much as an audition. Her grand debut was fast approaching, and with it, a barrage of razors in the night that will terrorize audiences and actors alike. There is no exit, no escape, and when the curtain finally rises, Razid himself will take center stage to cross the threshold into the unholy darkness that lies just beyond. I'm pretty sure that's going to be fine for everybody. Yeah, it's going to end well and not with razors. 48 pages of fear. I really like it when there's like just thick boy comics. Yeah. It does require a little bit more work on our part to just basically match them up with people because $7 American is a bit steep for something that you want to try out. But you know us. We're not going to do you wrong. We're going to match you up real nice. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the start of Sharp Boy Summer. Uh, I believe that's what Marvel's calling this initiative. Um, or maybe Summer of Sy Symbiotes. I don't know. Sharp Boy Summer. I like that better. Yeah, uh, with Carnage Reigns. It's a crossover between Carnage and Miles Morales with a little bit of Red Goblin thrown in. Um, so if you're getting your Carnage, if you're getting your Miles Morales, we are making sure that you're getting the story. Uh, you're not going to miss out on any parts unless you yourself want to. Because some people are just like, nah, I just want my Miles. I get it. Um, but if you're looking for you know more of the through lines, we've got this in your file. We also have uh, the start of this new mini series, uh, Cult of Carnage Misery. Uh, featuring another symbiote character uh, that is taking over Liz Allen. For folks who know the old school Spider-Man stuff, she is an original Spider-Man's character. Um, and uh, a joke I liked that I saw today in the retailers group, sometimes they do good things, or just like, so, people, keep an eye out for her first appearance in Amazing Fantasy 15 because that might spike. All right? <laughs> Ooh, sassy. Yeah. So, I love all of that. Um, so yeah, if you're into Sharp Boys, there's a lot of content coming your way, including Extreme Venomverse, um, this crossover, and yeah, Summer of Symbiotes. Uh, you know, your regular Venom book, your regular Carnage book, and the death of Venomverse. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, death of the Sharp Boys. Oh, no. Oh, and an Infinity comic to go along with some stuff. Hmm. I do like them. Anyways, yeah. Sharp Boy Summer! Woo! Hey, look, it's a Batman. Asterix, in our reality, boy is a general term. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do, do, not gender specific. We've got a Batman number 900, comma, which is number 135. All right, I'm going to go through these while you're talking. we got a whole lot of covers for this baby. Um, it is the culmination of Chip Zdarsky's most recent Batman story, in which he comes to a reality where there is no Batman. And... Sexy. No Joker? What? Uh, the way the plot unfolds brings you some surprises. And since this is the 900th issue, it does some really cool things. I'm just going to spoil Danica on a few things. Uh, do, 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 do. Something like this. What's that about? Huh. Uh huh. Okay. Um, some old school comic lines. Some of this. Cool art. Some of this. Hey! We're talking Batmans. Now, why? Well, you'll have to read to find out. Um, yeah. Hey! Some of that. Cool, cool, cool. Some of that. Wow. And this is all the same artist? 
Um, or did they actually change up? Because so I think the back part is all one artist. Oh wow! But then the best. Oh oh oh! The absolute best. Yes, yes, they did the thing. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, y'all should get Batman. Truly, who is the most prepared Batman? The answer will surprise you. Not you, Andrew. <laughs> All right, Austin, if you have a cover choice, let me know. Otherwise, I will just pick randomly. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So, yeah. Uh, oh, it's right. big times for a boy, Chip Zdarsky. We will be talking to him later. Uh, definitely live, pre recorded. It'll be super easy to tell because the walls will be. <laughs> the walls will plain. be very different. And you are wearing a different shirt, my friend. Indeed. Just give me one sec. Yeah, no worries. Two, okay. All right, so next up we have no preference, just two different ones. I like it. I see that. Um, we got star signs. Star signs from Saladin Ahmed and Megan Levins. Now, this was a product that uh, Saladin Ahmed had running on his Substack mm, okay. when that was going strong. Um, that and uh, the last one he had terror something that my brain's not remembering all. Cover of. B is by Colleen Doran. It sure is. Um, I mean, that's a get. We're talking big guns here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, the constellations of the zodiac fall to Earth, granting twelve ordinary people from very different walks of life the superhuman powers of the star signs. But each of them is about to learn that power always comes with a price. Awesome. Hey, mm -hmm. thanks, Andrew, for for that to memories. That's the other book that he was doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was good. I read issue one. It was good. I like both these books. I will say full stop. Two issues get you the whole kind of momentum for both of them. Mm -hmm. um, that would have been my suggestion in general. Would have been like, hey, y'all doing them up on Substack. Bundle up those first two issues. People will kind of, uh, the word about how the books will be like, will be out and about. But that proof of concept, that hook, you want to get set in real deep. Issue two for both of these. Which book? Twelve ninety nine American. Yeah, that's Star a good side? question. No, oh, it's a regular price. I don't know. I don't know. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Hey, look. He said, "No, girls don't like that one." You don't like Spider Killer? I really don't. Uh, Spider Rex, very cute though. Very cute. Car Carla Pacheco back doing her Spider Rex stories. Um, this is the new Edge of the Spider-Verse series uh, built because, hey, there's a new Spider-Verse coming out. Um, and uh, we're just visiting all sorts of different versions of Spider-Mans mm. and doing our thing. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that Spider-Man's a bad Spider-Man. You don't, you don't want to check out that second story, Danica. I really don't. Just heads up on that one. Yep. I won't be. No offense, Spider-Verse. No thank you. You live in my nightmares. <laughs> there was the whole time that what was the one that was last year that was like man spider or something and i was like oh man is... of spiders hey ladybug yeah <laughs> i really thought you were gonna okay there's a ladybug i can handle ladybugs but like honestly <laughs> i thought you were gonna be like hey, there's a spider you dumb dumb even the windows open is what's happening here oh my god that would be amazing oh now i want that to happen that's very cute <laughs> oh, I'm sad. It's not a thing. Who? How? How would you have a spider dinosaur and not think that also devil dinosaur exists? Like, I'm just mm. what? I'm gonna need follow up because I did not get enough Met Gala social media yesterday, and that's not a joke. I just saw a few dresses, and that's it. That's because social media is dead, baby. Yeah, it's true. Austin, stop it. <laughs> I don't care for this behavior in my chat. We have the return of Animal Castle. Animal Castle is basically Animal Farm, but about capitalism. Yeah. And it is gorgeous, and it hurts. It yeah. hurts so hard. 
I did not finish the first uh, collection. I only read like the first two or three issues, but oh my God, I need Still to gorgeous. get back into it. Look at that. It's Just so ridiculous. beautiful and it'll hurt your heart. At Variant Edition, we have a lot of things that are beautiful and will hurt your heart and we will sell them to you. Indeed. If you desire them. Do you want to be sad, but be happy about it? Variant Edition. Yeah, actually, that's kind of our MO. Yeah. Hey, we got some Groot here. What's up with Groot? What's happening? What's going on? Well, first off, the one thing that I know about him is his name is Groot. Oh, okay. I heard that too. Yeah. There's a return of Dan Abnett to uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy characters, which is really cool. Uh, doing a wee Groot story. Um, I believe uh, when he was younger. This is one of those like uh, retro stories. Yeah, it looks like a young Groot. So tiny, so small. Indeed. If we are wrong about where this takes place, we'll tell you. <laughs> I mean, I could pull up the solicit right now. That's true. You can. I will do it. And then this next one too, please. Don't threaten me with a good time. Oh, you don't threaten me with a good time there, boy. Before he was a guardian of the galaxy, before the Groot fall, young Groot lived a life of tranquility on his serene homeworld. But when monstrous invaders attack his planet, Groot must accept his heroic destiny. Will this destiny lead him to come to blows with a young Kree soldier by the name of Marvel? That's cool. Oh, yeah. So it is a baby story. He's a baby. He's Groot. just a baby. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't be current Groot at all. No, no. And the new Guardians book is fire. Um, if you're looking for like space apocalypse, some ticking clock stuff, yeah, some Western thrown in there, my goodness, like you could do a whole lot worse, just so much worse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Variant edition, you could do so much worse. <laughs> oh no. We're it's our eighth anniversary. Let's come up with some catchphrases, baby. <laughs> there was that one show we came up with all those great slogans that we were going to put on t-shirts. They were terrible. Yeah. We should probably do that at some point. I think one of them was literally just like, variant edition, I guess. I guess. <laughs> I love it. Um, in that vein, we are still thinking about tote bags uh, because the, the one-time use bag thing. Hi, baby. I got ladybug on my arm. Hello. You should go back. You should go back, honey. It's okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. She gonna pee. No, it's okay. Go here. Go. No, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I am fighting with a ladybug. Yeah, we need to get her back to the window. I'm fighting for my life. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, lady. I'm so Stop it. <laughs> I'm sorry. You live here now. I'm sorry. We'll get you back to the window after the show. One of our cats is going to try and eat you and get really sad about it because ladybugs have the the fear juice. Oh. That's why if you they're scared, you get a little yellow on you. Yeah. Uh, and it tastes terrible. And the idea is like if someone's trying to eat them, they have that chance of like getting out with a gun. Smart. Ladybugs. They're, they're small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ladybugs are tough brows. We've got survival from when, Sean Lewis, who I love. Oh, yeah, Sean Lewis is good people. Yeah. When Emma Reed journeyed back to her hometown in Alaska, she was expecting little more than a tense family reunion at the annual military alumni get together. Excuse me. But early that morning, a plane crash landed in the thick woods near the mountain. And the creature within brings an ancient terror to the last American frontier the frontier and will turn this unspoiled wilderness into a killing ground. the american frontier yeah american frontier built tough anyway this looks like it will be a five issue miniseries so if that sounds super rad check it out have you heard about trucks have i have i We've got Astrobots, which is uh, coming up from Massive. And by Simon Furman, folks might remember that dude as having written a whole heck lot of Transformers. And now he's doing um, Astrobots. Astrobots. <laughs> so this truly does feel like, hey, I'm doing, I'm doing a Transformers, but with sort of like a more uh, European style art. 
Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's got gorgeous detail. Yeah, because um, the artist on this was a is a heavy metal artist. Yeah, and it is beautiful. It is that European style. Um, and yeah, uh, if you're if you're kind of into like Transformers, but also maybe a little apocalyptic, they pow, 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 pow. Pew, 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 pew. <sighs> I'm so excited for everybody to discover this. I'm going to open the first page because I can. Woo woo. Tuesday. This is technically on sale on Tuesday. Oh, is that is What's... that Captain Marvel riding a Tyrannosaurus? Why, yes, it is. And that's how we start this epic tale. <laughs> Everything about this book is so great. You've got Mark Wade, you've got Dan Moore, the team that has been doing uh <laughs> batman and superman world's finest doing a fun vibrant shazam book um you get introduced to the characters real quick you get introduced to who Sh who uh the uh shazam is you actually find out what they end up calling him in this as well oh. because if you say his name he appears <laughs> i believe in shazam yeah uh I've Who's I've somewhat who? wrestle pilled. Yeah, you have Danica. Um, there's a there's a wonderful young Scottish wrestler named <laughs> Joe Hendry. <laughs> He's crazy. It's just madness. I love Joe Hendry. Um, when he was being essentially reintroduced to my Trash Baby program, Impact Wrestling, he had a bunch of different uh, uh, little skits, and the first one is like a family gathered around a dying dad. And they're, uh, and the dad's dying. They're like, we're going to have to pull the plug. He's like, wait, I think, I think I hear him saying something. What are you saying? Say his name. Say his name. And then the music starts. Say his name and he appears. I believe in Joe Hendry. And everyone goes. And Joe <laughs> Hendry comes in and he's just a dude who's just like, yeah, it's this guy so right cheesy. here. It's so cheesy. Every every one of those little videos is like 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 um film school like first year. It's so bad and it's so good. It's so good. Um, halfway through, the dad dies. Yeah, he flatlines, yes, and that's yes. when the music picks up and with a and everyone starts dancing. Joe Hendry gets a high five from the dead guy. Oh yeah, like I think his son or something just, literally like, lifts his hands up and does him a high five. That's so bad. That's the first one. Joe Hendry's amazing. Yeah. So occasionally uh, we say, uh, if you say his name, Squee appears. Yeah. Because Squee is a great word, and it goes in every single lyric you could possibly think of. And we just change it to "I believe I am hungry." <laughs> <laughs> meow meow. It's so great. Anyway, um, you should check out those dumb videos. They're really funny and really bad. Yep. <laughs> Joe Hendry, dead dad. Oh, don't look that up. I don't know if that will work. It probably does. I don't want it to work. All right. Our, what, our last single issue? I think so. Ooh. Yeah. Then we're getting down to the bookie books. Uh, so Monomyth. Um. The music stopped? It or? sure did. Oh, no. Uh, magic is all but extinct. When the last ailing wizard f casts a final desperate spell to summon the descendants of ancient bloodlines to a school for magic now in disrepair, those chosen ones find a horror of the likes they've never experienced. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Oh, yes. They will have to confront the deepest parts of themselves, their tragic pasts, and defeat each other to survive the ordeal. This is from the fellow who wrote Nottingham. So if you liked Nottingham, you definitely want to check this out. It also means I'm probably going to put into Nottingham people's files. Heck yeah. Because the folks who love Nottingham love Nottingham. They were obsessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a craze for a while there. It really was. Well, it was like a speculator thing too. Yeah, a little bit. Um, I've I found that there's like a chunk of people that we saw for about like nine months that are gone. They really are. Yeah. Um, Most and, of them are nice. Like I have no problem with them. But exactly. I'm just like, right. I kind of know what you're here for, bud. But it's. Um, I think it was indicative of sort of the 
the bubble basically right yep. because that was really where the peak was and everyone was into it and now we're seeing that pullback quite a bit but like we're pretty we're pretty agile with that so it's actually been fine for us and actually way better for us oh so much better it's weird to say that we're not we're not selling technically as many comics but we're making more money right now oh well, it's because comics are you don't make money with comics single issue comics nobody makes money with single issue comics and that's always the fun thing when there's those arguments of uh in the industry where they're just like but we need them and i mean we don't when when you're going on about how like oh there's no money in comics and then they're also talking about how like ah but lunar is evil they're clearly in this to benefit themselves i mean there's no money in our organization selling single issue comics they sell their single issue comics for ridiculously cheap through discount comic book service they aren't doing distribution to make money distribution of single issues does not make money it is a loss leader it is to get to the next phase single issues are a loss leader to carry you on to the actual part of the industry that works and functions yeah the like six weeks when diamond was down we had so much money because we didn't spend money on single issues it was great it was wild it was it's weird to say but like mm. after those six months we were in the best position we had ever been in before yeah like financially we were we were doing great and like, it's gotten a little better since then yeah, yeah. but if we met up with a similar situation like we'd pretty much be fine yeah we got graphic novels yeah 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 yeah. yeah. That's all you yep, need yep, baby yep, yep. That's all you need baby baby come here we'll take care of you and give you some graphic novels come to me Hello, welcome to Graphic Novel Store. Hello. Very legitimate business. Very legitimate. Not in my mother's basement. <laughs> First off, how dare you? <laughs> it's in our second bedroom. <laughs> this is the studio, not the store. My God. <laughs> All right. I legitimately read issue one of this and then somehow lost track of it completely. I don't know how. Probably because my life is... You love these creators. I do. Yeah. But like, I just didn't... It was like issue one came out, and then before I knew it, it was like at, at issue like four or five, and I went, "Wait, well, what? Ha, what? Okay, I'll wait for the trade." I, I don't know what happened. I know we we got it in, but it just like slipped my mind completely. It was so weird. So anyway, I have yet to read it, but I do, I do, I do like these creators. This is the least we can do, uh, by Ayolanda Zanfardine. Bardino and Alyssa Romboli. Okay, go with that. Hope for the best. Mysterious magical power arises from a world nearly destroyed by war. A young woman fights for her ideas of revolution and to build a new society from the debris. Realizing that she can't do it alone, she must prove her worth to the Eclipse rebels to join them against the dreadful Eden army. A story of discovering what is right and what love means in a militarily militarily occupied and socially oppressed United Kingdom. Yeah. What was the first Alice in Leatherland, right? That they did? That was the first, yes. Um, and then a thing called love. Right. Alice yeah. in Leatherland was this nice story about a young woman who I believe moved to the city. She's like a children's author. Yeah. Oh my god, it was so amazing. And ends up in a house with uh, a polycule, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And about her learning different things about how sexuality works and all this kind of stuff and marrying it with art. It's a brilliant story. Yeah, it's in our romance section. Definitely check it out. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's just really sweet. Mm -hmm. We've yeah. got the Hauntology from Jeremy Hahn. Yeah. Your boy. Yes, yes, he wrote The Beauty, and he's done many, many things since then. Uh, very popular horror boy. I think you also have Red, Red Mother, too, don't you? Oh, yeah, Red Mother. Did I finish Red Mother? I own it. Did I finish it? That is a question for another time. Not yet. From <laughs> creatures of the night to even more terrifying creatures of the day, Hauntology is an anxiety-inducing collection of 28 short stories and vignettes. Vignettes. Get out. From the mind of Jeremy Hahn, the writer and artist behind the beauty, the realm, re the red mother, the approach. He loves the duh. 
This is not the hauntology, though. Ah, oh, what a waste. And Jeremy. other nightmarish <laughs> landscapes. Uh, whether exploring a claustrophobic old house full of nefarious entities or the heavy thoughts one's having during the pending end of the world, this is a very personal project. It was written and drawn entirely during the COVID knockdown. Lockdown. Sorry. The COVID knockdown. The COVID knockdown. I mean, yeah, knocked me right down. March, last March, yeah. Uh, features an introduction it. by Shirley Jackson Award-winning horror author Nathan Bellingrud. Ooh, someone I have to look up. Yeah, it's got good pull quotes from Declan Shelby, James Tynan, Jeff Lemire, you know, whatever. Good horror boys. He's all, fine. Also, good spooky boys. I could be sassy and just be like, hmm. Just boys, huh? Only boys. Only boys in this horror house. Only boys like to be scared. Ooh, scare me. Scare me, Dad. Scare me, Daddy. Yes, he said it. He said it. <laughs> that makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I put that up, but absolutely put it up again because it is still true. I am super excited. Yeah, the next couple are like Brandon Bud. Big boy for a big boy. About Sandman Mystery Theater, the first compendium, finally, finally, finally collecting the first half mm. of Sandman Mystery Theater. Sandman Mystery Theater is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> this will explain uh, <laughs> the most of this here. The year is 1938. By day, De uh, Wesley Dodds. Son of the late inventor Edward Dodds appears to be just another innocuous member of New York City's social elite. But each night, Wesley is hunted by prophetic visions of evil that plague his dreams. No longer able to ignore the violence in these premonitions, Wesley decides to stalk the waking world for the criminals who hide themselves beneath society's callous indifference. Armed with a gas mask and a tranquilizing gas gun, he now dispenses justice as the Sandman. Set in a post-depression landscape filled with the glamorous socialites, hardened gangsters, and bigoted men of power, Sam and Mystery Theater is a noir thriller crafted by some of the comics' greatest talents, including Matt Wagner, Stephen T. Siegel, Guy Davis, and more. Uh, and this is the first of two. Compendion. Mm. Com Compendion. Compendion. Uh, the second half of the series has never been collected in... Uh, Trade paperback it just hasn't. Mm. Yeah, I remember uh, like a million years ago, we had the comic sets. We had like most of them, so yeah. I had bundled them in like the story arc. So there was like four issues per. Yeah, and some of them took a long time to go, but when they were found, they were treasured. Oh, exactly. People were so excited. So uh, good call. I know you want to talk about that one. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I want to talk about mine. This is volume one. Of the Department of Truth. It's so pretty. It's got spot glass. Eee, spot glass. <laughs> now, yes, you might be asking, Danica, you have all the single issues. Why would you need it? Shut up! I would say to you, I would not say that. Uh, I need it because then I can read it. I can pull out the whole first thing. She's 1 to 17 with one hand from my bookshelf. Ooh. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I love that. Yeah, I've been waiting for this. This is cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little something live for our for our nice people. Okay. I was gonna I'm gonna turn turn down the music for a second. I'm gonna ask for complete silence. All right. Scare me, Daddy. Scare me, Daddy. There we go. He did the thing. He did the thing. Now there's a scare me daddy on our on our uh, soundboard. That was way too easy. Scare me daddy. There we go. Okay, having two of you on this podcast, I'm not sure I can handle that. <laughs> scare me daddy. <laughs> that pause before, sorry, um, that pause before it happens is just like unsettling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could have tightened that up. I might tighten it up. Use your editing skills. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! It would all be all day, all day. Just his niece is going, yay! It would be great, but it would be all day. <laughs> Hi, Sean. Welcome back. Oh, 
Oh yeah, this is like my niece's singing our old theme song. I don't know how she got up here, but she's on my mic. Sorry, lady. I was in it first. The ultimate sister moment. Seriously. <laughs> That's my favorite is the last moment of that. I was singing like the whole song. They're fine. And then just, hey, I'm upset. <laughs> so I, I think I almost... Uh, almost ate a ladybug right there because she was on my mic. Like, <laughs> that's because that's, that's she was in here and she just crawled along. I I know. I just yeah, she's like on the cord hanging out. We'll get her outside. You know, don't don't worry. We'll protect her. I definitely will let you. <laughs> I'm so sorry, lady. All right, we have the new Superman Space Age Collected Edition, baby. I am super excited for folks to get their hands on this. I uh, loved every bit of this. This is basically sort of taking the uh, Spider-Man life story kind of angle where they're going through the whole eras of different characters and really sticking to one era and really digging into uh, that feel and uh, the life events that were happening around that. So uh, also it's by my boy, Mark Russell, with art from the All Reds, baby. Uh, meet Clint. Clint Clark. Clint Clark. Clint Clark. Clark Kent. Wow. A young reporter who has just learned the world will soon come to an end, and there's nothing he can do to save it. Sounds like a job for his alter ego, Superman. After years of standing idle, the young man from Krypton defies the wishes of his fathers to come out to the world as the first superhero of the space age. As each decade passes and new dangers emerge, he wonders whether this will uh, be the one to kill him and everyone he loves. Superman realizes even good intentions are not without the backlash. Uh, their backlash as this world transforms into a place as determined to destroy itself as he is to save it. Now, this is about nothing in particular about our uh, world or the world views. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a book that I highly recommend because it is uh, uh, something I'll dig deep into your. So I was gonna say cockles. No judgment. We don't king shame here. Variant edition. Yeah, the cockles of your heart. <laughs> all right. Oh, this is delightful. This is fairest of them of all. A villain's graphic novel. Exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tale of the young princess Snow White and her evil stepmother, the Wicked Queen, is widely known. The Queen was jealous of the girl's beauty, which drove her to make an attempt on the sweet, naive girl's life. But what caused the Queen to become so, well, wicked? Could the Queen simply have been born that cruel? Or maybe it has to do with a mysterious mirror gifted to her upon her wedding and swirling with dark magic. Oh, uh, do you want to make sounds, lady? Oh, you're too late to make sounds. Who is the man in the mirror and how does he connect to the queen's downfall? Adapted from Serena Valentino's New York Times best-selling villain series, fairest of all is the tragic reimagining of Snow White from the Wicked Queen's point of view. Oh, it can't fly. Told with oh, did I break it? No, it's just why it's still here. I'm sorry. It's okay. I didn't. I you tried didn't not know. to hurt it. No, you didn't hurt it. It just is the reason why it was walking around here. It can't fly. It tried, and then it fell backwards, upside down. Oh, I'm so sorry, sweetheart. You're so small. This world is too big for you. Yeah. I'm not gonna kill it. I'm just gonna try and get it to the window. Okay. I can do the last couple books. Thank you. Go save that lady. Oh, wait. Thanks. Sorry. Next up is Wakanda. Uh, 
Ooh, by many people. Many, many people. Nope. What's this proud nation without its king? Prepare to find out as five different fan fa- favorite Wakandan characters grab the spotlight. First up, Shuri proves there's a reason she too once wielded the power of the Black Panther. Then, Mbaku shows his worth as regent of the intergalactic empire of Wakanda when an old foe, an old foe threatens to destroy its future. Eric Killmonger stars in a haunting story of his early days under the thumb of Ulysses, Ulysses Claw. New hero, Tosin, must step up and defend his nation when the abomination attacks. And how far will okay, uh, Ok... I don't know why I let you distract me. Like, I don't need to do this. It's so silly to me. Wakanda. I love it. Uh, go to protect her country. Plus, the history of the Black Panther's story provides a comprehensive overview of the many warriors who have taken up the mantle of Wakanda's protector. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So, uh, we were sent a preview copy of this a few months back. Um, so, I haven't yet seen the full color, but just reading the preview alone was amazing. So, this is about, uh, this is from two of, honestly, some of the best creators, yeah, I think. Some of your favorites, for sure. And definitely some of my favorites, yes. Uh, Magdalene Visaggio and Jen St. Ange. And so, if you haven't heard the story about when I met Jen St. Ange, uh, here it is in a very short form. I met Jen St. Ange and made a fool of myself because I was so embarrassed and ignored her very polite husband because I was making a fool of Completely myself. Completely ignored. It was I so great. I loved every moment to. about it. <laughs> I did not mean to. He was a very nice man, but I was so flustered. <laughs> so, looking forward to... Um, finally framing the prints that we bought from her like what five years ago <laughs> yeah we do have the she hulk uh, yes that yeah you had her draw for you i might actually move it home because it might end up on one of these walls that'd be cool yeah it's in the office right now because people kept asking me if they could buy it <laughs> and i'm like no it's mine it's mine you can't have it can't we have it. specifically other she hulk uh blank covers just for yeah. Artists to potentially do some more She-Hulks for Danica. Yeah, that might be cool. Yep. Might be like a wall one day. Just like, cool. Anyway, this is the Aja Waja. A story about the transformative power of friendship. And an immortal demon trying to take over the world. But mostly the friendship thing. Welcome to Bowling Broke. A small town just like any other. Or so 8th graders Val and Lainey think. They're the best of best friends and are always there for each other which is important when you're queer like Lainey or on the spectrum like Val and don't seem to fit in anywhere else in middle school. When a class project about bowling broke's uh, supernatural history leads to a for real, excuse me, for real ghost sighting, Val and Lainey decide to take things to the next level and accidentally summon the Aja Waja, a demonic presence connected to a series of mysterious tragedies throughout the town's sordid history. Now all heck is broken loose. All heck. Yes. With the with the whole town acting weird and nowhere left to turn, it's going to be up to Val, Lainey, and their small uh, small group of friends to return things to normal. If normal is even something they want to return to. Ooh. Yes. This was flipping amazing. Um, and I'm very excited to read it again. In full color. Oh my god, look at it. It's definitely a book that'll have me saying, scare me, daddy. I hope not. It's about eighth graders. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, the age bracket is 10 and up. Yeah. Mm. You know what I should do? What? Okay. So next week, I'm not going to be here. Um, I'm going to be on my way to Calgary or in Calgary uh, at a hotel before Wednesday's uh, Marigold Library Conference. Yay! That I'll be doing a presentation at. I am going to meet Hal Jordan and Joanne McLeod. Jealous. Because they are apparently opening the convention. 
Uh, and uh, one of my uh, sessions is one of the first ones. Um, and then I asked them if I could just like pop into other sessions to just like take in the content. They're like, of course you can. I'm just like, heck yes. Awesome. Let's do this. Nerd out. Oh, I'm so excited because there's a, well, there's a whole bunch of things about how uh, to sort of like combat the ideas of book banning and all this kind of stuff. And it's just like, yeah, let's, let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, Cause I could add that to my arsenal too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that's, that's gonna be exciting, but uh, I'll just make a branding board. Oh no. Of different things. Now, do you want it labeled or no? Do you want them to be surprises? <laughs> Brandon, what do you have to say about that? Then I want surprises. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be bad, though. It's going to be very... Yes. Yes, you did. It's very cool. Yeah, the Green Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about this book. All right. Finally, we've got Blood of the Virgin from Pantheon. Uh, I love Pantheon graphic novels. They're the folks that did uh, that David Mazzuchelli book, uh, Astrius Polyp. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's real good. They're also the publishers of Persepolis. You know, um, Mouse. Little books. We books. Banned books. We've got Blood of the Virgin by Sammy Harkham. Starts out with, you can burn in hell. Set primarily in Los Angeles in 1971, Blood of the Virgin is the story of a 27-year-old Seymour, an Iraqi Jewish immigrant film editor who works for an exploitation film production company. Sammy Harkham brings us into the underbelly of Los Angeles during a crucial evolutionary moment in the industry, from the last wheeze of the studio system to the rise of independent filmmaking. Seymour, his wife, and their new baby struggle as he tries to make it in the movie business, writing screenplays on spec and pining for the chance to direct when his boss buys one of his scripts for a project called Blood of the Virgin and gives Seymour the chance to direct it, what follows is a surreal, tragic comic, Making of Journey. As Seymour's blind ambition propels this movie, his home life grows increasingly fraught. The film's production becomes a means to spiral out into space and time, uh, resulting in an epigraphic novel that explores the intersection of 20th century America, parenthood, sex, the immigrant experience, the dawn of early Hollywood, and shockingly, the Holocaust. So there's a lot in here. It is a big book. Yeah. And I'm very excited. Very excited mm -hmm. to see. They do they do, do Black Hole as well. Yes. Yes. Oh. Sorry, Kate. Brandon told me to take the day off. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm I said, you. stop it. Yeah. <laughs> I got a lot done, though. I painted for a while, so this is nice. It was good. All right. Well, we've gone a bit over time, and we're going to go even more over time because we have... Part one of our Chips Zdarsky interview coming Are up. Are you sure right you're going to play it? Yeah, absolutely. You said it's like half an hour. It sure is. Okay. No one is prepared for this. Yeah. If it was like five minutes, you probably could get away with it's it. It's all but good. now I'm okay. It is going to be available elsewhere. Um, but this is the premiere. This is where it's dropping. Okay. Yeah. Solo Danica show next week is going to be just a... Just a... Big yikes from me. Yeah. There you are. Yeah. Um, but we could have special second host Austin if he wants to. If he's up for it, yeah, totally. Yeah. Cool, cool. All right. Um, we're gonna do this before the interview. Oh yeah, good call. <gasps> it's our completely unique section of the show where we look through a magic mirror and see all you fancy people out there and say hi. We see you too, and we appreciate you being here, and we hope that you know we're here for you too. Looking through the mirror, I see Ben. Hello, Ben. I see Bryce. Hi. I see Austin. Hello, hello. I see the one and only Foley. And, and you, you can, can too. too. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 11 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. We are open until 7 p.m. those days. Saturday from 11 to 5. You can see Danica on all those days. And you can see me in store on Sundays from 11 to 5. I'm also there most of those other days, except for Friday. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. I'm seeing Sean. Hello. I'm seeing Jules. Hey. I'm seeing Steven. Or Stev. Steven Yeg. Sharp Boy Summer. I just passed that again. I'm so excited for Sharp Boy Summer. 
Probably our cats are too. And I see Kate. Hello. Howdy. And actually, I'm going to throw a special shout out. I don't know who, who will actually watch this, but all of our retailer friends, uh, they're coming up on Free Conflict Day as well. And everybody has their own battles to fight. And um, I know you got this. Yeah, uh, absolutely. We are there for you in spirit and, you know, through all our retailer powers, our retailers unite. And all that. I don't know. Yep. It'll be great. It'll be great. It's going to be awesome. All right. Well. Uh, the way to do this is to basically upload the video file. It'll start playing uh, right away, ish. Oh, you didn't do that yet? Well, so if you upload it, it starts playing. Oh. So I, I, uh, there's no rewind on it. No. So if you miss the first bit where I'm just like, "Hey, we're here with Chip Zdarsky," as oh. it loads, That's... I can't fix that. Oh, great! Live feeds, love that. We're doing it live, kids. We're doing it live. Um, so yeah, the first bit we're uh, talking uh, talking to Chip. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can put a thing uh, up on the screen that's just like this was pre-recorded, so no one's just like, "Hey, Chip, answer this question." You could if you want to. Um, he's not gonna answer you. No, <laughs> he can't see you. No, uh, but he might be able to see you on the twentieth. He's Chip in the past. Indeed. Um, so we're going to get to talk about that. It's the first half of our conversation where we start talking about public domain and then we go into Spider-Man life story. Um, and then that's where we uh, call things a day before the next half of the interview. So I uh, hope you all enjoy this. And uh, one or both of us will see you on the other side briefly to just be like, hey, thanks. Bye. <laughs> all right. I'll talk with you soon. Uh, doing a signing in our store on uh, May 20th, uh, Saturday, from noon to 3. Uh, how are you doing, Chip? Doing good. I'm excited to uh, to come and celebrate the home of my birth, Edmonton. Ooh. Right. Yeah, yeah you, you are originally from here-ish. It's true. It's true. Yeah, I, I lived in Stony Plain uh, until I was about six. My dad built a house out there. And then, uh, and then we fled for, for <laughs> no reasons that had to do with uh, Alberta. Oh, uh, we're under no illusions of what Alberta is. Um, <laughs> as as much as uh, I've I've uh, essentially lived here my entire life, I uh, have a, a interesting relationship with the province. Yeah, yeah. I... Hey, this is fun. Um, we should probably try and get the video to actually do a video. I'm going to try this again. <laughs> yeah, it kind of froze. It kind of froze. Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. This is what I mean by live. So I'm actually going to try and remove us to see if that helps out. So Okay. And that's why this will be shared in its own separate feed later. But this we wanted to do like a live premiere. All right. who will be uh, doing a signing in our store on uh, May 20th, uh, Saturday, from noon to 3. Uh, how are you doing, Chip? Doing good. I'm excited to uh, to come and celebrate the home of my birth, Edmonton. Ooh. Right. Yeah, yeah you, you are originally from here-ish. It's true. It's true. Yeah, I, I lived in Stony Plain uh, until I was about six. My dad built a house out there. And then, uh, and then we fled for, for <laughs> no reasons that had to do with uh, Alberta. Oh, uh, we're under no illusions of what Alberta is. Um, <laughs> as as much as uh, I've I've uh, essentially lived here my entire life, I uh, I have a, a interesting relationship with the province. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, I think every no matter where you live in Canada, mm -hmm. everyone has an interesting relationship with their province. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, terrible segue. Speaking of interesting, uh, relationships, let's talk about mm. public domain. Oh, good job. Um, I just did a reread of it, uh, the other day and I, uh, 
I am very, very happy that this is a thing that exists, that uh, you're, the energy uh, that you're choosing to put out uh, into the world, that you've chosen a project like this that uh, not only focuses on the comics industry, but maybe sort of the, the, uh, the parts of the comics industry that uh, made that um, uh, comics will eat you alive uh, quote. Uh, yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh, God, comics. We love them. We hate them. Mm. <laughs> They're such a part of our lives. Yeah, they help. Well, they help both of us eat. So that's this that's is nice. this is true. This is true. Like, I mean, uh, part of what I was trying to do in public domain is like not just be down on the comics. Like, there's a genuine joy in making them, uh, and the people you get to work with, and um, the reactions from readers, things like that. Like, there are so many good parts to comics that. Um, the public domain is about a family where uh, um, the father, the patriarch, um, created this character called the Domain back in like the 70s, which is now like the big pop culture character in the world, the movies, the action figures. And uh, much like real life, he, he doesn't see a dime from it, mm -hmm. um, but he's rather content. But it's his son who's not because uh, he sees a world full of... Uh, um, the broken promises and the lost revenue and um, the lack of uh, kind of creator rights. Uh, so the story is kind of about the family dynamics and um, uh, and about ownership and about the comic industry and beyond the comic industry. Now that it's it's everything. Like you look at Marvel, it's like <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I can't turn around. There's a podcast. There's a movie. There's a TV show. It's all of it. <laughs> there's, there's stage productions um but but yeah but still it's like there's a love of comics like we're we're in this because we, we we enjoy the process we enjoy the people and uh yeah so i hope that that part comes across in it for sure without spoiling anything too much i did really like how um sort of the more realistic look at uh the business end of comics uh, mixed well with uh, the joy of creation, basically, because a, a big part of of uh, that book and in, in the first arc is um, is about connection in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. and the the way that the patriarch has connected or disconnected from his creations and his family, mm -hmm. and how that really comes together at the end. Yeah, yeah. There, and there's so many stories of like, not even older creators, creators now who just like work ridiculous hours and uh, and maybe um, as a result don't have kind of a deep connection to their loved ones because they're they spent so many hours at the drawing table, mm -hmm. kind of getting these books out into the world. Um, yeah, yeah, and you really notice it. Like, I've been lucky enough to go to the Eisners a few times. And usually when an older comic creator wins something, they thank their, uh, it's usually a dude, and they usually thank their wife for keeping everything going at home while they spent all their time on this thing. I'm just like, oh man, like, you're really missing out. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. It's nice to, you know, to be able to draw Captain America or whatever, but, uh, but it's also nice to cook a meal for your family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's a balance that Danica and I have been, uh, had to strike with the store. Um, oh yeah. So um, she's uh, my my business partner and my wife, and so even at the start too, it was finding that balance of where things stop mm -hmm. in one place and another, um, or when they have to continue, or even just uh, when we had to explain to friends. Um, the healthy thing for us is finding periods of time to be apart, mm -hmm. um, mostly because we have to uh, have different inputs so that we can actually talk about them. So we're not just like, oh, this thing happened to me today and um, you were there. So And to you, it happened to you as well. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Good, good times. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, a, there's kind of an intensity between, because they're very similar ideas, being a lifelong freelancer and a mm -hmm. small business owner. It's like the amount of time you put into it is the amount of like financial reward that you get out of it <laughs> so like if you take a vacation you just don't make money yeah when i take a vacation 
I don't make my mortgage. Like it's like, yeah, yeah, which kind of feeds the um, the going all in on 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 the work side of things, and uh, maybe kind of getting blinders to other things falling apart in your life, um, which is you know clearly is what's happened to the characters in public domain. Mm -hmm. It's a it's an incredibly relatable story, and, and sadly, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one one that I. I think is very important too, especially for folks who uh, do engage with the medium. Um, it's it's equally just the, uh, a a, sto uh, a a story about family, um, mm -hmm. but also just sort of about the industry that we function in and that we love, and and like you said, those relationships and how they push and pull against each other, and yeah, finding finding that balance like you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> and yet the, the irony is I spend all my time making it so I don't have the balance. <laughs> <laughs> I I can I I understand completely. Um yeah. recently I, I've gotten back into writing and I started doing uh more uh comics industry articles. Um mm. and our employee uh very, very politely, um, because uh I had I'd hit a bit of a, a funk for the last like year and a half and a lot of things happened, um, including us uh, uh, taking on uh, another store's uh, clientele after it burned down, unfortunately. Oh, Jesus, yeah. Um, so that's where we have our employee from. We, um, we, uh, we, <laughs> we rescued Andrew. He's a rescue. <laughs> um, uh. And uh, he'd, he'd kind of uh, seen... Uh, how I was down and when I was just like, yeah, you know what? I think I'm, I think I'm going to start writing about the industry again. He just kind of looks at me and goes, are you, are you sure you want to? <laughs> you want, don't you want to write about puppies maybe it, or something? Is it going to actually be helpful for you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's how, it's how I get a lot of my frustrations about the industry out basically. Yeah. Yeah. To, to get it down and to, um, I don't know, release it from my brain. Cause otherwise my brain's going like, and another thing, Yeah. Gotta be careful, you're gonna turn into a can Hey, it looks like they're stuck. Um, let's see if I can't. Is it paused? Let's see. <laughs> I thought that you had paused it. I think we should just post this somewhere. Well, yeah. This I, is the I premiere, understand. but maybe we should just have given them like a 10 minute preview or something. Maybe that's what we ended up doing. <sighs> that's what we ended up doing. And also Squee was here, which is great. Yeah. We'll get you we'll get you your daily doses doses of chip dosage. Yeah, so I guess you got the first bit. Yeah. Stay tuned, I guess. We'll pop that up tomorrow morning. Yeah. And we got a uh, hi. And yeah, I noticed that Steve is here. Very exciting. Happy 40th. It was his birthday recently. That's good. Squee says happy birthday too. Yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like, what? I don't, what? <laughs> I just want the chin scritches. <laughs> all right. Well. Oh my God. We are going to go away because this is not working out at all. But I'm glad that you all got to see Squee. The there worst part go. is I tried this earlier and it all worked perfectly. Yeah, I don't. So I don't know. All right. Well. You live and you learn. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to. This is a hot mess. Okay. We should we should go and try to read some comics. All right. We'll talk to y'all soon. Bye. Bye.